Hi everyone, welcome to another lecture from Think Surgery. This video is going to be a short review of the topic neurofibromatosis. Neurofibromatosis is a group of neurocutaneous disorders, which means neurofibromatosis mainly affects the skin and the nervous system. Neurofibromatosis is divided into two different types neurofibromatosis type 1 and neurofibromatosis type 2. There are few things which are common between the two. Both are autosomal dominant diseases and both occurs due to loss of function mutation. Now we are going to know how neurofibromatosis 1 takes place. On the long arm of chromosome 17, there is a region called band 11.2. This band codes for a gene called neurofibromin 1. This gene gives rise to a product called neurofibromin. Inside a cell, we have many messenger pathways. One such pathway is RAS pathway. When RAS pathway is active, it leads to cell proliferation. Neurofibromin inactivates this RAS pathway, which ultimately leads to the stoppage of proliferation. Therefore, neurofibromin acts like a tumor suppressor. When there is a mutation in neurofibromin, it stops being the tumor suppressor. This makes the cell undergo unsuppressed proliferation. This is how neurofibromatosis type 2 gene is located on a region on long arm of chromosome 22. This region is called band 12. Band 12 codes for neurofibromin 2 gene, which in turn codes for membrane protein Merlin. Just like neurofibromin, Merlin 2 is a tumor suppressor protein. Merlin inhibits PI3 kinase pathway and mTOR pathway, thus eventually stopping cell proliferation. Out of all the cases of neurofibromatosis, 97% of them are neurofibromatosis type 1 and only 3% make up neurofibromatosis type 2. 50% of neurofibromatosis type 1 are sporadic in nature and the other 50% are inherited. One thing we must know is that neurofibromatosis doesn't show any gender or racial predilection. Now coming to some histological terms. First one is neurofibroma. Neurofibromas are benign tumors which are made up of variety of cells like axons, perineural cells, Schwann cells, mast cells, and collagenous matrix. Plexiform neurofibroma is a type of neurofibroma which often presents like this. It obviously causes severe disfigurements. These arise from fascicles of nerves supplying the muscles. This can be invasive in nature. Neurofibromatosis have both cutaneous and non-cutaneous manifestations. Cutaneous manifestation of neurofibromatosis includes cafe all spots. These are brown colored macules with smooth borders. Freckling in axillary region, it is also called crocine. Dermal tumors, which can be dome-like or pedunculated in nature. And finally, plexiform neurofibromas which we have already seen, the plexiform neurofibromas can feel like a bag of worm. The non-cutaneous manifestations of neurofibromatosis are scoliosis, Lish nodules, optic nerve glioma and even leukemia. The spectrum also includes some neuropsychiatric disorders like ADHD and learning difficulties. Neurofibromatosis 2 can present with vestibular schwannomas or acoustic neuromas. It can be present bilaterally or unilaterally. These can lead to symptoms like tinnitus, hearing difficulties and problem balancing. Neurofibromatosis type 2 is also associated with meningiomas. Coming to treatment, Cafe all spots and neurofibromas are benign entities and requires no treatment. Plexiform neurofibroma on the other hand has malignant potential. 
it can get transformed into something called as malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. Imatinib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, effectively reduces the size of plexiform neurofibroma. In case of behavioral abnormalities which are noticed, we must take a neurologist's opinion. Ophthalmologist's opinion becomes necessary for ruling out optic nerve glioma. Chemotherapy is the most effective treatment for optic nerve glioma. For neurofibromatosis type 2, many investigations like MRI, audiological assessment and ophthalmological assessments are required. Surgery however remains the first line of therapy. Surgery is especially indicated if acoustic neuroma is seen compressing the brainstem. Lastly, Bevacizumab, which is a VEGF inhibitor, can be used to treat neurofibromatosis type 2 medically. With that, we come to the end of the lecture. I hope you enjoyed this and I am looking forward to seeing you again. Hit the like button and subscribe my channel. It will help me out a lot. Thank you so much.